All right, we're going to go ahead and dive in here and get started. This call is being recorded, just FYI, and if anyone wants to record, feel free. Wednesday, July 17th, so we're going to cover some V4 product updates here. Um, if you guys have questions, of course, as always, the chat's open, so feel free to comment or chat or drop any good recipes in there for us and we've got some of our team here monitoring that chat we'll try to get you guys answers to stuff and go ahead and get dived in here all right so there we go so uh added features into the v4 portal one-time scanning as kind of back parity from the v3 product so you'll find this at the company level so you have to be in the customer and then you'll go into the overview, into your agent screen, and from the agent download screen where you get your install package from, you'll see that scan as a radio button option. Instructions for that scan are below. It's a very simple five or six step process there. We have a document published for this as well. So if you hit the help link on the toolbar and check out our help link, I've got a walkthrough on there that shows you, it's a Windows-based uh, assessment, but it works the same for Mac or Linux as well, just using terminal versus using PowerShell. And it's a pretty simple walkthrough. So one-time scan comes back. When you upload the results from your one-time scan, that will hit the assets view and it will read as agent type one-time scan. So you'll know that it was just a one-time asset and it will not be scanned or anything like that. And then of course you can remove those from the assets screen using your three dot action menus from your action screen. And so one-time scanning, re-added back in. Excuse me. If you're using ServiceNow integration, slight change to authentication method to match their latest API changes. So when you're setting up ServiceNow credentials, you can use either a username or an API key that you would get out of the ServiceNow portal. Again, if you hit the help link on the ServiceNow docs, we've got information on where to obtain those keys and your domain names and all the information that you'd need to set that up. But that has been added. If you're a ServiceNow user integrator, you may want to just glance at that and make sure you're using the appropriate off method there for yourself. Change added a new menu into the vulnerabilities uh, section. So under our vulnerabilities area, you will now find a new option vulnerabilities by OS. So this is a view of all of vulnerabilities that include both application. So any application installed like the ones you're seeing here, or OS related, so operating system patches that are not installed. So think of it like these two menus combined into one so you can kind of sort and filter and cut that apart the way you'd like. So another way to view your vulnerability data into some logical groupings there. So that's been added by OS so you can start to focus in on a different view of that data. And that will be found up at the global level or the company level. So depending on what you want to look at, who you want to see, you can change that up. So vulnerability by OS added into the vulnerability section. And if you drill down to the vulnerability data here that you're seeing the numbers of critical high, medium lows, and you actually drill down, it'll, sorry about that, went the wrong direction. It'll explode you down into the data or drill through the data. So you can now tap through that vulnerability data that's displayed in those dashboards. So you can see the underlying CVEs, assets, and any of the base exploit and impact scoring that we're pulling from the NVD. Of course, you can tap that CVE ID on our screen. Anywhere you see a CVE listed, you can generally tap it and it will take you to the National Vulnerability Database where you can see that information about said CVE. And then of course, you pop right, you navigate back. So once you click through and you wanna go back, you just tap that in the corner and it'll take you back. A uh, time zone setting update. So prior, the time zone setting was only found at the global setting menu and you can just basically set it for the entire system. We've now added the ability to add time zone override at the company level. So 
Now at the company, you have to be in a company. You'll go to your settings menu and you'll tap on that company settings. And you'll now have a new tab for time zone where you can set the customer's specific time zone, which the scheduler is going to honor. So if you have a scheduler in your system set up that says, I want to run a scheduled scan at 8 a.m. Well, 8 a.m. what? Now we'll look at the time zone at the customer level to determine what that time zone will be for said scanning. Okay, so company level setting, time zone overrides. Yeah, it is definitely about time. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh, new vulnerability filtering available at the application vulnerabilities view. So again, this will work global and at the company level. And if you're looking under vulnerabilities, you'll be in their application vulnerabilities specifically. And then from those, you can then filter that table by OS, or you can just bring it all together into a single line and do it by software. So for example, if you didn't want the seven zip to be broken out because of versions or OS, you could then just combine it into a single line and say, what are all the unique software names, regardless of the OS and versions that we're supporting here or, or carrying risk for, I should say. So that's been added to the application vulnerabilities view, global and company. So depending on which of those screens you're in, you'll have those options. We've changed the way the tags are being selected in our schedulers now. So this is a this is a really small change, but an effective one. So if any of you are using tags to modify the way a scheduler runs, this has now been changed from having to manually type in words and the tag names to a selectable dropdown list. So you'll hear you'll hit the drop down. Whoops. You'll hit that drop down. You'll pick the name of the tag you want to include or exclude, depending on what you're setting up. And then you'll use the little plus sign to the right of the field to add it down here. And you can do one or multiple tags in that rule. And then of course use the X to remove those off the off the view if you needed to. And these tags are incredibly useful for setting up schedulers to, you know, stagger some of your infrastructure for scanning. So a lot of partners use this to separate uh, servers and workstations, right, on scan schedules so that servers are not running scans maybe at the same time the workstations are or vice versa or network devices get segmented out, et cetera. There's ways to do that. So very useful, but small update. So if you're using tags and you're using the schedulers, you may want to just go look in the scheduler to make sure it looks like it should and make any spot check edits that you need to. Again, I had deck there to show you the add button. It's important if you just tap on the name, you do have to tap the add button to push it over to the menu. So a uh, new column uh, added to bring kind of a heads up view on your report schedulers. If you are using an encrypted email to deliver report recipients, those reports. So when you configure the report scheduler, there's going to be a password field that is optional. If you set the password up, the password will encrypt that email and then the recipient will need that password to view that report. If you don't use a password, then it just sends it normally and it's non-encrypted. And that's what that little signal is now telling you if you're using encrypted versus non-encrypted reports. So report scheduler, good spot to come in and get a look globally at all emails that are going out. And why would you not encrypt them? I guess is my question. So I'd get those set up. And you can look at those either company or global level, of course. External scan has the Word document report format now available to download directly from the external scan results uh, page. So if you're inside looking at results in the UI for your external assets, you'll now see that new Word doc. It always had Excel available. Word now has been added. And it's also available in the standard report section, of course, which is where that's pulling from. But that's been now added to company level external scan result reports, Word documents. 
We have added a filter for reports, for the standard reports. When you load up the standard report window, you can't miss the filter. It's right there staring you in the face. And this will allow you to you know, put parameters around that report data if you wanted to filter it out or any specific you know, columns of data that we've got there. You've also got the date range filters to the right of that where you can set your from and to date ranges. Again, if you wanna look at report data through any of those lenses, you'll find that right on the top of the standard report screen, set your parameters, print your reports, fetch them from the jobs section. Pretty straightforward. Some housekeeping, really just a name change here for you guys. Uh, you know, looks like Microsoft's name change is actually going to go through. Um, so Azure is now being renamed to Entra ID or Microsoft Entra. So we're taking steps in the app to change the menus, the tiles, some of the display names that you're seeing. And over the next weeks or week or so, we will be renaming and changing the documentation for these uh, integrations and to kind of match everything that's been been changed. So the UI and the docs are being updated to the Entra name where it used to read Azure. Same thing here, Entra ID now displayed in the Active Directory modules dropdown. You will not see Active Directory modules unless you're in a company. It does not display globally. So make sure if you want to see this, you'll see it only at the company level. Okay, so Entra ID being replaced. We have added the option. This is actually one of my favorite updates, I think, from this group is the remote install agent option on an individual asset that has been discovered by your probes. So if you have a probe and you go scan a network and you find some assets out there that do not have your agent on it and you want to push your agent on it, you'll now be able to do it, you know, right from that assets discovered three dot action menu, you'll hit that remote install and the probe will attempt to install the lightweight agent on said asset that it found. So depending on the OS type, it's generally going to use SMB if it's a Windows platform or SSH access for other types of platforms. So docs will be updated for this. Um, should see them out on that help link. Again, company level, assets screen, three dot action menu, new option for remote install. And just to remind you guys as well, if you go to the company settings and you go to the company settings menu, we also have a remote agent install option on the company itself where you can globally enable that kind of stuff. So keep in mind, remote agent install available at the company as a whole or controlled at an individual asset push, depending on what you want to do. Dashboard update, uh, new PI, PII scanning. So if you're using PII scanning, there is a new dashboard at the company level that displays the data that's being returned. And it basically breaks out, you know, that scan type data that's been selected in your scanning profiles. So phone, email, credit card, et cetera. These are the scanning profiles that you can set up in the PII scanning. And if you're not using that, again, it's just right up on your main toolbar. It'll have its own dedicated section. Globally, company level options you can configure here for those scans, okay? But there is a new dashboard found at the company level for PII scan data. We've also got a new AD password policy dashboard that was published. Uh, I know this was requested from a few partners. Um, this data is also available in our standard reports, the Active Directory reporting. It's also available in our UI, of course, but now the AD password policy dashboard has been published at the company level. So you need to be in the company. And of course, you'll need to have Active Directory scanning doing, uh, working in order to see data here, but that has been added to the dashboards. We have added a parity type of patch management dashboard. If you were using our previous product, we had a patch dashboard over there. This one's slightly different, but been added to the new portal here. So again, company level patch management dashboard, 
get a look at patch details, automatic manual patching, and basically just what's going on with the patching and what's being successful, what's not been successful, and of course, the logs and the jobs, right? Some of the details about why things are failing. Many times agents are offline, or I think the second most common thing I see is that policies are not in place to allow application patching to go fetch those patches from the vendors or manufacturers' websites. Because that's where we generally are reaching for packages, right? We're going to go directly to the OEM or the vendor, and sometimes those are being blocked. Um, but again, if you guys are having issues with that, let us know. You know, no patching engines are perfect. I think everyone here probably understands that really well. But we want to hear about it and we want to, you know, bring the data forward so we can help troubleshoot it further if, if it's being a problem. So patch management dashboard, if you are patching, go check it out, take a look, give us your feedback, let us know what you see. So those are the released updates, things that are out now in the portal. And the next few decks are going to cover just kind of what we're working on here for the next coming release. No date for it just yet, but. These will be coming on very soon and currently in QA with our team. So more dashboard views coming to the company levels uh, to bring more of the data forward that we're discovering. So OS by assets will be coming forward. So again, being able to break out and look at operating system spreads across the customers. We are going to be adding the network vulnerability dashboards at the company level and then separating confirmed versus unconfirmed network vulnerabilities. So you'll have some data integrity here, verified, you know, via registry entries or confirmed vulnerabilities versus things that we're detecting and scanning for that sometimes have unofficial security patches with them, or they're not actually carrying a CVE. It's something that we're scanning for as a security check to give you uh, some insight into what could be a attack surface. So. This is a new dashboard on the network vulnerability data that's going to be released again, company level. Azure Active Directory, of course, move into Entra ID. As I mentioned earlier, we're still taking steps. There's quite a few that need to be changed, but soon you will see all of the formerly Azure named Azure Grouped, Azure Licensing, Azure Logs, et cetera, will now become Microsoft Entra ID. So some cosmetic changes to the dashboard names in the systems. And then our last update is on company level remediation summaries by EPSS scoring. So this one is currently in progress, again, being worked on by our teams. You may have seen this in your systems at once upon a time. This was a parity dashboard from V3. We've released it for V4, um, but we've kind of made, been making some changes to it. So you may have seen it and then not seen it. So if you did, don't be alarmed. Uh, we're just verifying that the, the dashboard data is correct before it's released to everybody. So those will be the next things that you guys will see. There'll be more updates, of course, but this is what we know about so far. And I believe, yeah, that was the end of, of our updates uh, for the call today. So uh, some really good updates coming in. Uh, as always, you know, we appreciate everybody's time, feedback, patience, uh, helping us drive this product forward. We've gotten some really, really incredible feature requests and enhancements and just general conversations with partners going. So we want to make sure we keep that, keep that rolling. And I'm going to turn my attention to the chat and see if there was anything that didn't get answered. It didn't look like there was too much chatter going on in chat today, which may or may not be a good thing, but I don't, it doesn't look like anything that did not get addressed. Um, as always guys, if anyone here is needing help with the new V4 portal, the product we've got, Plenty of support bandwidth here for you guys. Um, we've got six onboarding sessions a week that we're running. So if you go out to connectsecure.com slash onboarding, we have our schedule posted out there. So if you have any of your teammates, your colleagues, new hires that are joining and going to be taking roles and responsibilities in the vulnerability management side, send them to those calls, let them get their first understanding of the tool, and then they can come back to your companies with better questions to ask and a better understanding of what's there. Um, but as always, you know, email to us as well, support at connectsecure.com. We want to know what's going on. We're here to help you guys and uh, we value everyone's time here. So appreciate everyone's time uh, that came today and we'll look forward to connecting with you guys all next week.
थैंक यू